today we are going to discuss about the column splices and how to design the column splices those things will be discussed basically a joint when provided in the length of member is called splice when the length of column is more than the available length in such cases we use splice joint so uh, in many cases we have seen the available length uh, in the market is less than the required length of the column so in that case we need to join those together concentrically uh, so that the load is transferred from one section to another section so in such cases the uh, column splices are used and also in case of multi story building where the columns are provided along its height we have seen the columns uh, section size is required less because the uh, 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 weight of the um, or uh, force of the uh, building on the column or the load uh, coming to the column across the height is gradually increasing towards uh, the ground therefore we need to accommodate the column section size uh, larger towards the ground ground uh, ground level and as a result we need to change the section size across the height uh, so that the economic design can be done in such cases we have to provide splices between two floors to join um, between two uh, two unequal uh, sections so basically uh, if a compression member is loaded concentrically uh, we should not provide any splice means uh, theoretically we do not need to provide any splice but uh, load is never um, axial and truly it is not axial and real column has to resist the bending due to the eccentricity uh, of the load therefore we have to provide the splice so now if we see the specification for design of splices uh, we can see that when the ends of the compression members are faced for complete bearing over the whole area this should be spliced to hold the connected members accurately in position and to resist uh, any tension when bending is uh, present say for example if we provide a splice here say we have two column joint here and uh, uh, we are providing this is this is the column and this two columns are joined by the spliced so basically to hold the two members properly uh, we need to connect the uh, this members through splice and any tension may happen uh, because of existing uh, exist of bending so that has to be also taken care and when such members are not faced for complete bearing splices uh, should be designed to transmit all forces to which these are subjected uh, means sometimes it may be faced complete bearing or it may not be faced complete bearing in case of complete bearing the whole area uh, if it is complete bearing under complete bearing then uh, it should be spliced just for uh, to transfer the load from uh, upper story to lower story right and uh, uh, it is uh, spliced is designed just to connect the members accurately in position so that in position it may stay but in case of incomplete bearing we have to uh, transfer the load uh, uh, transfer the load uh, so the splice has to be designed in such a way the uh, load transformation from one story to another story are done properly and splices are basically designed as a short column now if we draw the uh, a column flange having complete bearing we can see uh, that the front view if we see say for example we are providing a i section and it is spliced here so this is one i section another i section is there so here if load is uh, concentrically acting then for complete bearing 
the splice is provided just to hold the um, columns in position right so we provide splice in two side on the flange uh, basically column flanges are uh, having complete bearing and the front view will look like this front view of the column section so maybe we have to provide certain bolt connection here and bolt connection in this right so and if we see in the side view we can see in the side view the columns will look like this this is the side view so it is spliced in this position and if it is connected by bolt then maybe we can connect two numbers of bolt at each face of each splice right this will be looking at side view and if wave has to be spliced for shear then it should look like this if we splice the wave also then it will look like this where uh, OS plus will be provided for shear. So, if it is spliced at this junction then we can provide say bolt here at the flange to make it complete bearing and also at wave also we provide uh, we provide splicing to make means to register shear. So, this is wave splice for shear right. So, these are the column means these are the basically column flanges having complete bearing means for complete bearing this is what we can consider column flanges for complete bearing. Now, let us see what are the steps we need to follow so that we can design the splice properly. So, if we see the steps the steps are be, uh, made based on the codal provisions and in the codal means considering the codal provisions we have uh, uh, make the steps in the following order say first. So, for axial compressive load the plates are provided on the flanges, flanges of the two column sections to be spliced. So, now if the column has the machine end then the spliced is designed only to keep the columns in position as I told and to carry tension due to the bending moment to which it may be subjected. But the splice placed and the connection should be designed to carry 50 percent of the axial load and tension. So, in this case the 50 percent uh, load will be considered to design the splice to carry axial load and tension. However, if the ends are not machined then the splice and connections are to design to reduce the total axial load and any tension if present due to the bending moment. So, there are two cases it may come one is the uh, columns are machined means have uh, columns have a machine ends another is not machined. Okay. In case of machine end we will design the ply plate in such a way that it can carry a 50 percent of the axial load and if some tension is there the tension 50 percent of the axial load and tension and if not uh, if the column has no machine ends then uh, we have to design the uh, splice against total axial load and tension if present. So, this is what uh, we have to remember. Now, how to find out the forces? 
So, here we will see the load for design of splice and connection due to axial load we can consider as P u 1 as P u by 4 for machine end. Why P u by 4? Let us see. Uh, if we see here design, if the columns are spliced at a at a uh, certain points, then we know this has two plate right in two sides. So, these are to be connected by the bolts or welds due to certain load. This load is for complete machine end, this load is 50 percent of the total force. If total force is P u, then 50 percent of P u will be P u by 2 and this P u by 2 will be divided by 2 flanges in 2 ends. So, it will be finally, half of P u by t that means, P u by 4. So, uh, the design load uh, due to x uh, sorry design load for uh, splice due to axial load we can consider P u 1 as P u by 4 and for machine end it will be P u by 2 because it is 100 percent it is taking. So, total P u and in two side so it will be P u by 2 and another force may come if moment is present. So, because of presence of moment the P u 2 we can consider as M u by lever arm. Lever arm is the center to center distance of the two splice plates and M u is the factor bending moment. So, center to center distance means if we consider this is the splicing. So, this is the total depth plus center of this plate and center of this plate. So, this will be the lever arm. Right. So, P u 2 the load for design of splice uh, due to moment will become M u by lever arm, where lever arm is the center to center distance of the two splice plates. Right. So, then what we will do? The, so, total P u will be total P u on the splice plate will be P u 1 plus P u 2. So, this is how we will calculate the total force coming on the splice plate. Now, in second steps what we will do? We will find out the uh, means we will consider the splice space to be a short column with zero cylinderness ratio. So, in the codal provision it is told that we can consider splice plate sorry we can consider splice plate as a zero length a zero cylinderness ratio. So, if we consider zero cylinderness ratio that means, the plates will be subjected to only yield stress that means, the failure will happen due to yielding of the plates only. So, there is no buckling theoretically. So, the design consideration also will be done in that way. So, if plates are subjected to only yield stress then we can find out the cross sectional area as total P u which is P u 1 by P u 1 plus P u 2 by F y where if y is the yield stress of the member. So, the cross sectional area of the splice space we can calculate from this that means, dividing the appropriate portion of the factor load coming from the splice space uh, coming over the splice by the yield stress right. So, this is how we can find out the cross sectional area. Now, if we know the cross sectional area then we can find out the width of splice. Uh, sorry thickness of splice. Thickness of splice will be found because the width of the splice plate would be constant that will be B f because width of the flange when we are going to use the uh, splice plates uh, to connect the flanges. So, the flange width of this section and width of the splice plate will remain same. Therefore, the thickness of the splice plate can be found by dividing the cross section area with its width. That means, whatever area is coming 
area divided by uh, width of flange will be the thickness. So, this is how we can find out the thickness of the splice plate. Then we can assume certain diameter of bolts for connections or we can assume the weld connections and if we use bolt connection we can find out the strength of the bolt due to shear and due to bearing. So, if we know the strength of the bolt then we can find out the uh, number of bolts also. However, in case of bearing plate is to be designed between two column section the length and width of the plate are kept equal to the size of lower story of column and the thickness is computed by equating the ultimate moment due to the factor load of the moment factor load to the moment of resistance of plate section. So, in case of bearing plate uh, if it is to be designed between two column sections then we have to consider these aspects. So, these are the steps which we need to remember. Now, following the steps we will go through this example and we will be able to understand how to design a splice. Okay. So, the example is like this the a column of ISHB 300 at 576.8 Newton per meter is to support a factor load of 500 kilo Newton. So, P u that P total factor load is 500 kilo Newton and shear force 120 kilo Newton and bending moment 40 kilo Newton. So, three type of forces are there right factor load P is 500 kilo Newton and shear force is given 120 kilo Newton and bending moment is coming 40 kilo Newton meter. Now, design the splice space connection using 4.6 grade bolt and let us use steel of grade as Fe 410. So, if you use this uh, uh, this data then we will see how to design the splice splice plate okay, due to this axial load and shear force and bending moment. Now, for this ISHB 300 we know few things like the cross sectional area of the ISHB 300 will become 7485 this is required we need to know. Now, flinch width of the uh, ISHB 300 is 250 and thickness of the flange is 10.6 millimeter and thickness of the wave is 7.6 millimeter right. So, these are the things which we can find we can find from sp6 from the table we can find and also we know for ap410 grade of bolt fu we know this data also will be required for designing fu fy is 250 and for 4.6 grade of bolt fu b will be 400 and partial safety factor like gamma m0 which will be used that is 1.1 and gamma mb is 1.25 uh, from table 5 we can find out this partial safety factor table 5 of IS 800 2007. So, these are the some data which will be used for calculation of the uh, design details right. Now, if we consider the 50 percent means uh, column sections are machined for complete bearing. So, maybe we can assume machine for complete bearing. Then we can consider that 50 percent of the load will come into splice right. So, if 50 percent of the load comes into splice that means, it will be the P u 1 will be P u uh, sorry P u 50 percent of P u and half of that will come to each splice that means, 50 percent means half of 500 into half. So, this is becoming 125 kilo Newton. So, direct load on each splice I can find out as 
125 kilo newton. Now, again as moment is present, so I have to find out load on splice due to moment. Load on splice due to moment, which we can say as P u 2 that will be m u by lever arm. So, we have to find out lever arm, right. So, m u is given which is 40 into 10 to the power 3. Um, uh, mu was given 40 kilo newton meter. So, 40 kilo newton into 10 to the 3 to make it kilo newton millimeter by lever arm, lever arm is 300 is the depth of the uh, uh, I section plus 6 mm is the plate thickness. If, if we assume plate thickness plus plate thickness as 6, then we can consider 6. Now, let us see. Uh, in the diagram that how we have considered the lever arm. So, these are the this is the column which need to be spliced. So, this is say this is a plate. Now, this column depth is 300 and this is assumed that as 6 mm thick splice plate. So, lever arm will be center to center distance of plate. So, this will be 300 plus 6 by 2 plus 6 by 2. So, I can find out P u 2 by and like this. Okay. So, that is becoming 130.72 kilo newton. So, total P u which we can say as total design load for splice P s as P u 1 is 125 and P u 2 as 130.72. So, this value is coming 255.72 kilo newton. So, the sectional area I can find out the sectional area required say sorry A. So, it will be P s by F y. So, it will be 255.72 into 10 cube by f y is 250. So, this is becoming 1022.9 millimeter square. So, cross sectional area of the splice plate is 1022.9. Right. Now, if we uh, consider the width of the splice plate at the flange width, then uh, we can consider flange width as the 250, right. So, thickness of the splice plate I can find out as 1022.9, this is the total cross section area by 250 is the uh, width of the splice. So, this is becoming 4.09 and in any case it has to be uh, means it should not be less than 6 mm, it should not be less than 6 mm. So, I can provide the splice plate thickness as 6 mm. So, T is equal to 6 mm, right. So, if T is equal to 6 mm, then I can um, I can make as, uh, make uh, the splice plate dimension as 250 by 6. So, provide 250 by 6 mm splice plate. Now, once we get this, now we can find out the uh, number of bolts required of the splice plate because we have to join the splice plate with uh, with the column uh, with certain number of bolts, right? So if we provide certain number of bolts, then uh, we need to know what is the strength of the bolt. So as we are using uh, 20 mm diameter of bolt, so I can find out the Shear strength of bolt VDSB will be say ANB into FUB by root 3 by gamma MB. So, that will become say 245 into 400 by root 3 by 1.25. So, this is coming 45.26 kilo newton, right. So, the design shear strength of the 20 mm diameter of bolt 
are calculated as 45.26 kN. Similarly, I can find out the strength due to bearing. So, bolt in uh, strength of bolt in bearing will be 2.5 kb kb dt into fu by gamma mb. So, now I need to know kb value for finding kb value I have to know what is the E n p that means, edge distance and pitch distance. Edge distance I can provide as 1.5 into d 0. So, that will be 1.5 into 22 which are coming 33. So, I can provide say 35 and similarly pitch distance is 2.5 into d. So, 2.5 into 20 is equal to 50. So, let us use 60. So, if we use edge as 35 mm and pitch as 60 mm, then I can find out k b value as e by 3 d 0 like this I can put the all the value e by 3 d 0 uh, which will become 0 0.53 then p by 3 d 0 minus 0.25. So, this will become 0 0.66 a few b by a few it will become 400 by 410 0 0.98 and 1. So, the lesser of this value will be the k b value. So, lesser of this 4 will be 0.53. So, if I put the value to find out the strength of bolt in bearing V d p b. So, this will become 2.5 into k b is 0.53 into d is 20 thickness is 6 and a few is 410 by 1.25. So, this is becoming 52.15 that means, the strength due to bearing is coming 52.15 and we have calculated earlier strength due to shear as 45.26. So, strength of bolt will be minimum of these two that means, the bolt value I can find out minimum of these two as 45.26 kilo newton. So, the number of bolt I can find out number of bolt will be the total load coming on the splice P s by B V that will be um, 255.72 by 45.26. So, this is coming 5.65 which is 6 mm right. So, we can provide 6 number of bolts for each splice. So, if we provide 6 number of bolts, then we can find out the length of splice plate. So, length will be if we provide 6 number of bolts that means, it will be uh, 2 into pitch is we have considered 2 into 60 plus 2 into 35. Right. So, because total number of bolts are 6 right. So, if we consider say 3 bolts here then this is P and then H then H. So, 2 P plus 2 E ok into 2 because we are providing splice plate like this uh, if it is spliced here if this is the column if this is spliced then uh, total length will be twice of this length. So, this is coming as 380 millimeter. So, with the pitch of 60 mm and edge of 35 mm the length of splice plate we are getting 380 millimeter. So, we can provide a splice space finally, as 380 by 250 width we have considered earlier and 6 mm uh, we have calculated the thickness. So, this will be like this right. 
now we have to provide. So, these are the splice plate due to the axial load and bending and we have to also find out splice plate for shear because it is under shear also. Splice plates for shear, right. So, this splice plates for shear will be discussed in next class uh, because time is over, uh, we cannot continue more. So, in next class, I will continue, uh, means I will discuss about the uh, design of splice plates in shear. Thank you.